Hey, 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 my new Bosch welcome to Katawashojo. Once again, we are here. In front of Hanako's door, after another of her unexplained absences from the class. What is going on? Hanako, what is wrong? Tell me. Nothing. Considering this is the second day in a row she's been like this, I'm starting to worry about her. Summoning my willpower, I decided to try one last way to get her to respond. Hanako, if you don't say anything, I'll go get the nurse for you. Go away! What? It's hard to tell whether her tones one of depression, anger, or both. What in the world can I actually do to help her if she doesn't even want help? The message is clear enough. I can't just leave her like this for. Just sitting in her room for days on end. Grabbing my templates in thought, I would draw to my own room to think about how to proceed. Rational at least what's needed here. As an overreaction may just make matters worse. I dig around drawer after the drawer of my desk, looking for where I put the damn piece of paper. Before she left, Lee told me the number to call her own while in Scotland and I wrote it down. Not now that I need it for the damn thing. Ah here. I probably should have just entered it directly into my cell phone. Come to move it. Without further ado, I enter the numbers and then sleep press the call button. Ooh, nice! Old school flip phone. Nice! The fact the phone rings at the old shows that I got the prefix for Scotland, for a call to Scotland, right at least. I've never made an international call before. Same actually. So that's some comfort. Eventually, the phone picks up. A feminine voice. I don't recognize on the other hand. I mean, and it's probably this mother. Satu? Is it English? Probably. English! Suddenly finding myself unprepared, I realize I can't understand the words she says. Either due to my limited vocabulary or her heavy accent. I should have expected this since, according to Lee, her mother is a native Scot. I soldier on in the hope that she must. No, some Japanese comes in her daughter's native language, please! Oh, uh, it's he sound like I speak king. And enthusiastic sound of resolution can be heard as she recognizes the language. My feeling of relief is mess. Oh, I, you must be one of these friends from school, correct? I actually don't know the Scot Scottish uh, way of speaking. I probably wouldn't even be able to do it. Uh, anyway, even so, her accent means I have to concentrate to work out what she's saying. Yes, that's right. Please to meet, to speak to you, Miss Sato. It's so nice of her to find someone so blind. Please, dear, it's for you. Her mother seems nice, if a little over enthusiastic given the mundane situation. There's a small silence as Lee takes her time getting the phone. In the distance, I can just make out her mother scolding her playfully for just getting up. Hello, Lily speaking. You sound awful. She makes a sound somewhere between a dying animal and a yawn. The one thing I did remember to check before calling was the time zone. It would be pretty late in the morning over there, so she really has no excuse. Not feeling well? Just tired. What time is it there? Late afternoon. School finished for the day not long ago. You're really not a morning person, are you? I don't need you making fun of it as well. It takes me a measure of restraint not to laugh at her pain groan. Poor girl. How are you doing over there? Bar, in, bar the mornings? It's been enjoyable. After not meeting them for so long, just having a meal together with my parents. It's nice. For the pool and the sheer size of the house might have something to do with that as well. Even if they are not in Japan. From the way it sounds, her family must be pretty wealthy to live so luxuriously. Are things alright with you and Hanako? Damn! I was hoping that wouldn't be brought up quite so quickly. I take a moment to try and sort out exactly how to describe the situation without causing her undue worry, but she picks up on that without the word being said. Hanako is not well, is she? How did you know? Because today is her birthday. I'd hoped she might have gotten at least a little better after coming to know you, but... How is she right now? Uh, she missed school yesterday and seemed out of sorts when I check up on her. Today she missed school again and just told me to go away. I really got no idea what to make of it. Has this happened in the past? Is it related to her scaring in some way? Unfortunately so. 
Roughly some, the same thing happened last year when her birthday came up. As far as I can tell, it's because her parents died in the accident that caused her scare. Oh, fuck. And Hadako blames herself for their deaths. Oh, fuck. What she says does seem to make sense. If she's blaming herself on her birthday, she might well be ruining that she was ever born. The fact that Lee seems so in the dark about it for almost to the extent that I am is a surprise. So that's why she lives in the student dormitories as well. Oh shit. Has she told you any more about the incident? I mean accident. As close as you come. She's very rarely told me anything about what happened. What I know about is largely conjecture. She sounds depressed, almost defeated, considering the trauma Hanako must have gone through. Arlie can't fault Lee for not knowing. Nevertheless, she still seems to consider it a personal failing. Don't blame yourself, Lee, with everything she's gone through. I know. Thank you, Isa. I'm sorry I can be of help, of more help to you. It's fine. I'll just give it some thought. Thanks, and have a good time in Scotland. Um, hi. Hmm? It's nothing. Thank you for taking care of Hanako. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. And with that, the line goes silent. Amid the seemingly only increased number of questions, I can ask where the most immediate is what Lilik was going to say. Oh. oh no. I'm an idiot. She must have thought I was going to talk with her, but I only asked her for help, help, help with Hanako. Even more shameful than that thought is the fact that such an appraisal would be largely correct. Well, thanks here first. For now, I need to at least sort out Hanako and make sure that she's actually eating okay. The occasional passing students give badly hidden glance at the plate of food I carried to a female dormitories. It's hardly a meal to be proud of. Only being an instant microwave meal from the convenience store, but it should at least fill her up. Eventually I arrive outside of her room. After hemming to ward off a couple of girls who joked and tried to pilfer the food I'd taken so long to procure. I decided to forego knocking, since it was proven to be an utterly useless measure and it's somewhat difficult to do with my hands full. Hanako? It's Hisao. I know you're listening. I got some food for you. Silence. As I expected. I'll eat beside the door. Please eat it at least, okay? There, I've said my piece. Now, it's up to her. Putting the plate down, I walk back to my own room to eat my dinner. By the time I return to Hanako's dormitory, a good hour has passed. Thankfully, there isn't anything to be seen by the door. I walk back at least, somewhat happier that she's eating. I have not lived in dormitories, man, but I wouldn't be so sure if that's her that picked up the plate, you know. I wouldn't trust dormitories. I mean, on the other hand, it's Japan, so maybe it's not that bad, but in Poland, you wouldn't find that plate for sure. And it wouldn't be taken by the one you delivered it to as well. If she intends to get through this by herself, then be able to help, even if just in such a small way is at least something. Damn. So it seems like of all the characters I mean, we don't know all the characters' backstories yet, but it seems like Hanako has been through the worst. Not, I, not like I should compare or anything, but you know, I sit reading the library after school, turning page after page, barely registering the words written on each out of the shore of the sheer boredom. With my cheek resting in my hand, I can't help not seeing the slight little feeling against my palm. 
It won't be long before I'll need to get a razor. You mean in high school? At the end of high school? You lucky bastard. I needed a razor in junior high school. <laughs> Quite literally. Back then I actually was, you know, re let's say religiously every day shaving myself. <laughs> now technically I get rid of the moustache every day. Because it annoys me, but yeah. But with the bird I don't, I don't care. I like it. Anyway, I'm giving up on reading, I simply let my head drop on the book in front of me. Things have quieted down considerably since Hanako began attending school again. When she first returned to class, nothing was said nor done that wasn't part of the usual routine. And it's been the same way since. Neither of us desired to bring up her accident, so there simply wasn't any point in pursuing it. Two a few days went by, the daily grind continuing just as it had before. It's all natural that my mind would wander to other places, and more importantly other people. The lily shaped hole in the daily life Hanako and me has been pretty noticeable for a while now. I'd be pleased to say that this has allowed me time to refine just what my thoughts on her exactly are, but alas, I've had no such luck. It doesn't help that many attempts to do so have led to the troublesome topic of Iwanako. Every time my thoughts drift into that direction, I reflexively try to think about something else. Why are you bringing Ivanako again? What the hell? Why did this have to happen now? Um, I turn and look up to the source of the tentative voice coming from behind me. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to disturb anyone. That's not it. Huh? I glance around the orange in the room, quickly realizing how silly my apology must have sounded. In time I spent thinking and lazing around in the area, everyone's well and truly left. Library closing. If you don't want to go, I could keep it open a bit longer. It's no problem at all. Don't worry, I should get going anyway. Thanks. As I get up and begin to move off, I feel Yuko's eyes drilling to my back. Ugh. Is there something wrong? You look depressed, are you okay? Yuko nervously twists her fingers as she says this, unsure whether she is overstepping her boundaries or not. I really can't tell if she's more worried about my mood or about bothering me. Both? Who knows? Normally I just shrug it off and assure her that I'm fine, but my reflective mood gets the better of me. Despite being stuff, surely doesn't feel as much like an authority figure as the others. It's just... Uh, I guess the best thing for it will be relationship problems. Oh, uh, I'm not too good with that kind of thing. My only relationship ended a bit abruptly. But if you want to talk about it, I mean I could listen, I think. Now I feel kind of bad for bringing it up. She's not that old, for, so at least she has a good chance of finding another partner. It isn't like we're in a bad situation right now. We have spent many days together as friends, sometimes going out to do stuff, that kind of thing. But I'm starting to want to do more for her, learn more about her, be with her more. I'm not sure whether it's actually rough or not, for, and our friendship as it is stands is enjoyable. You shouldn't let that stop you. Ah, sorry. She's right for, how to say this? Um. I think that it's nice that you have a good friendship, but school is going to eventually end. Do you think you'll be fine with not knowing if it could have gone further after you've graduated? Uh, I guess that's the crux of the problem. I really have no idea what the answer to the question is. Well, I can't really help there. What your true feelings are is something you have to decide for yourself. But I think that if you do love her, you should definitely say something. She's right. After I think about it really hard, I decided that even if my relationship didn't work out, it's still better that way than never knowing if it might have or not. Okay. She's correct. 
and they're expecting Yuko to sound so wise. It only makes sense that, with more life experience than I, she'd have a better idea about this. Anyway, I suppose not very much was actually answered. Talking to her has helped get it off my chest, and I had no doubt that I should confess it. I really do like Lily. Yes, we should. I give a slightly frustrated sigh. <sighs> if only reading so much actually helped when it comes to situations like this. She gives a girlish giggle, which only reinforces my view of her as being different from the usual stuff here. I mean... Maybe because she's not a teacher, and that's why she gives you these vibes? And maybe because she's also a, univ a, a university student, right? You're in high school, about to also graduate, so... Now that I think about it, she's not that much older. What? Yeah, maybe two. Uh, in the end, it all comes down to what will happen if the school finishes once again. Funnily enough, I actually... Uh, I don't know if it's weird or not. I actually, I think, interacted with the girls that were either in my class or higher classes, but not really with the ones that were below. Considering what happened before I came to Yamako, it feels like being asked to keep up with a field of runners despite having started from a dozen yards behind them. It's just one more motive to move on from the past. The last thing I need right now is to get too caught up in that and getting homesick while I'm at it. Once again, I find myself calling Lily. My phone bill is going to be HORRIFIC, considering this is international. Technically, you know, now you would just kind of avoid it by installing proper app and calling through that app, right? It's as easy as that. But it's worth it. I don't only want to smooth her over her things from the last time called. I genuinely want to talk to her again. When the phone finally picks up, I really recognize the voice on the other end. Satu! Hello, Miss Seto. Uh, may I uh, speak? Uh... Damn, I forgot how the rest is supposed to go. It's not encouraging to forget such small of words, even if I didn't spend the last uh, that long trying to memorize them. Uh, may I speak with Lily, please? Hello, Kenisa. Are you teaching yourself English? Just a I don't think I'm too good at languages in general. Oh, don't say that. Your presentation was good. I'll get Lily for you. Just wait a moment. I obediently wait as she goes off in search of Lily. The other end going silent. And me hearing the noise of coins falling. Piling up. Piling up the amount of money. Piling up as I will have to pay for that. Ugh. Anyway, ev eventually. A much more awake soundingly than the last time as was. The tunnel over there being passed on by now. Hisao, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, hi. Good afternoon. Sorry for taking so long. I was outside in the garden. Gardening. Unfortunately, I found I'm no good at it, so I just smell the flowers. I think my fingers appreciate it more. I take it. Hanako's recovered a bit. Yeah, I just made sure she was sitting and eventually she righted herself. Thanks for the help on the other day. I don't think I was really that much help. The main thing is that she's better for. True. How's life over there then? It sounds like you've been living in nothing short of a mansion. I wouldn't call it a mansion. <laughs> but it is rather large, is obviously what she wants to say. For modesty stops her. I'm a little envious, but it is her holiday. It's a nice house to stay in for. There's a beach near here too, which Akira's especially fond of. She's a swimmer. She's constantly dragging me there to have a swimming competitions, which wins every time. Lee doesn't strike me as very athletic at all, so not being adept at swing seems logical enough. I think I would get along with Akira. Uh, the fastest I've ever seen her move is her understandably relaxed pace during her walks to and from the suburbs down the hill from the school. It makes the image of her swing hard to imagine. Uh, the beaches there must look nice. 
they'd be less crowded than the ones around here at least. I mean, it's Scotland, I would assume that not many people really go there. And to swim at that. I mean, it's not too warm there, right? On the beaches. Indeed. Akira says the area around here looks beautiful because it's so far outside of the city. I only realized what I've said after I said it, but it doesn't bother me at her at all. It's still easy to forget that she can't see when she's not around, despite the time we've been friends. That said, the local accent sometimes makes communication a bit hard. It's a constant reminder that this isn't home. Well, the fact that she doesn't consider her parents' residence to be her home makes good sense. It makes me realize that I can't really answer whether the same goes for me. Graduation from Yamako is decent now to be difficult to view objectively and I've spent so much time in this small room, I've come to accept the dormitory as my new home surprisingly quickly. And I guess that would be hard to deal with, is your knowledge of English holding up? Thankfully. I may be fluent, but being in a position where I have to use it often helps in curbing my Japanese accent, so it's been useful practice. Are here, you're trying to teach yourself English? Uh, I didn't want you to know! More like memorizing a few lines. And failing at even that much. I'm really not cut out for learning another language. That's bullshit. My admission of defeat draws an amused giggle. I believe that there are things one chooses to do in life, and those things that are chosen for one to do in life. You can take comfort in fact that you are better than me in science and math at least. Yeah, all that's helped is, in, is making me Muto's star student. I wouldn't worry about it. There are school skills for many jobs, right? That's what he tells me. His face very terribly lit up when I said I'd probably go into a car involving either. We both share a warm laugh at the events that have befallen each other on opposite ends of the world. It's nice and reminds me of our simple spot talk that I've been missing since she left. As each of us waits for the other to begin speaking, I decide to push ahead with my feelings. I can feel my throat tightening slightly. Uh, and at least it's not the heart, right? <coughs> well, uh... But I miss you. The silence on the other end of the phone tells me she's giving the words their due wave. But as it goes on, I can help feeling more and more apprehensive. Thankfully, the silence ends almost as quickly as it had begun. I miss you too, Hisao. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lily. Once again, the phone is hung up. Simply and without any further ado. Then again, I mean, uh, probably, if anything will give him a heart problem right now, is the bill. Ah, from the phone calls. That light tend to the almost a shy voice, her warm and soft tone. I'd simply be lying to myself if I were to say that I don't recognize this feeling for what it is. With thoughts of Lily dancing on my mind, I start spending her return. Today has been a most excellent day. Wait. No intermission? There was. I double clicked. I mean, the mouse double clicked because my left button is broken. I mean, not broken, but it double clicks from now on, basically. Something like this. Which is kinda annoying, but can't deal with that, unfortunately enough. Anyway. I sit listening to another of Muto's long-winded lectures, my mind wandering far from the scribbles on the dirty blackboard. Since I called Lily, my mind's been drawn to two directions. Two. Both roughly lead to the same conclusion. I've started to feel oddly detached from my past life. It's only been a month and a half since I arrived here, yet this school's become a second home. I gained new friends and contacts, managed to get to grips with the school's lifestyle and culture, and became, become accustomed to the quirks of my classmates. To become used to school where disabilities are the norm rather than the rare exception, 
still catches me off guard, sometimes when I think on it. The same school that is populated by the burned victims, amputees, the blind, the deaf and all the manner of disabilities in between. If someone had described the school to me before I'd come, I'd have shrugged it off as an overactive imagination. Even when I first arrived, I felt like the Dutch coming to this strange new land for the first time. It's amazing how quickly one becomes used to the environment they're forced to live in, really. And now I've even found someone that's got me entirely smitten. What a strange life. Before my mind can wander any further, for I find a page of lined paper slipped under my distracted face. The garish bright pink ink has no doubt been penned by Misha. Don't look so bad here, chance. School's nearly over. Three day holiday. All right, we get Saturday and Monday off. Can't complain about having less school, I suppose. I uncap my pen and scribble on the page before covertly passing back to her, flicking my eyes to the front of the class every now and then. Muto continues, scrolling away arcing equations and formulas on the board. Oh, uh, I'm guessing you have something planned. Misha takes the paper back and hunches over it comically even for her, with her tongue poking to the side of her mouth. Did she misinterpret my expression as depressed and is trying to cheer me up? Student casting what if she chain of course? You're not still brooding over that, surely. But each other could have help us poor lonely girls. I'd lend you a hand for today if I weren't going to be busy. Oh, naughty, naughty, Hitchan! I'm just going to meet Lily with Hanako. I don't know what you've get go got going through your head. So, he's back. Yeah, she's coming on the evening fly flight with the sister, so she'll be back in school next week. As she takes Zeno back and begins to write, I look up to see an unwelcome sight. While I frantically try to silently catch Miss attention, Muto confidently strikes through the gap between desks from the front of the class, his intent gaze focused directly on her. She suddenly stops writing as his tall figure casts an, Im as an impossibly long shadow over the page. Ah, uh, hey! He suddenly takes a piece of paper from her and begins to read. Sweating bullets, I quickly glance around the class, noting their complete silence. Of course, it would just have to be the one thing that actually gets their attention during the lesson. That's a dick move. After a sound, few seconds examining the page, he rolls the paper up into a small tube and lightly bobs me over the head with it. Half an hour until you can hop off to the studying council. I think you can hold on until then. Misha's face cracks as the entire class erupts into laughter. He might well be awkward, but he knows how to handle her excellently. I'd probably feel sorry for her if I weren't as busy stifling my own laughter. <laughs> is, the, is that one it? No, I think that's on foreign line. And so, the third aircraft they're not on comes into land. For the past half hour, we've been whiling away the time with small snippets of pointless chatter. Lee and Akira's flight has been delayed, and at this rate, it'll probably be dark before the plane arrives. Is that one it? No, the company colors are wrong. Hanako's eyes flutter left and right, following the trick of people in and out of the huge glass doors ahead of us. Fortunately, nobody pays her much heed, their attention apparently directed towards greater things. Maybe that one is it? No, I think that... Hold on a minute... Yeah, I think that one might be after all... It wasn't. <laughs> it takes still some more time before the billboard changes their flight status to disembarking. I loud yawn stinks up on me, not allowing enough time to stifle it. My sleep patterns have once again been all over the place, likely due to a mix of worrying about Hanako and the side effects of my medications. He's out, out there? I look to Hanako, then follow her gaze to the airport door. Mm. Oh, Lily! They are here! Really? We all call out to each other in greeting. Quickly shuffling over to the side to avoid blocking the passage of others. Lily! Hanako jumps forward to hug Lily, a white smile on her face being all that's needed to see her happiness at least return. Lily simply smiles in return, her voice soft. 
Oh, it's so wonderful to meet you again, Hanako. As the two give each other a hug. Well deserved after all this happened while she was gone, I turned to Akira. Yo! You're pretty late. <laughs> yeah! There was a really bad storm of the airport. We got trains just going from the car to the door. I guess that you will appreciate the weather here more than. Welcome back to you too, Lily. Hanako breaks off from Lee as I speak. For a long time, neither of us say a word. Contrary to what I thought her comic would be like, the atmosphere feels awkward, stifling, almost stifling. <laughs> Both of us try to guess each other's feelings. Not quite sure about what should be said. And then Akira steps up, pushes one of us onto other. Right? Damn, this is exactly what I feared when I thought of trying to move things forward between us. Lee runs her hand through her hair and awkwardly twirls one of her bangs in her fingers, clearly trying to think of how best to react. Eventually, thankfully, Lee gives a small sigh and breaks the silence. Ah, thank you, Hisa. It's nice to be back. Are you okay? Are you okay? You're tired. Evidently, not recollecting herself all that well. She quickly waves her hand in front of her face to stay off any concern Hanako may have over her. Uh, I'm okay, really. It's just a bit of a jet lag. Weak! You don't have any. She simply gives a big grin, puffing out her modest chest. I feel absolutely fine. That's not fair. <laughs> well, you shouldn't take too long to get rid of it. Ah, uh, that's right. He saw? Yeah. Don't we have a holiday from school soon? Uh, I'd have forgotten if Isha had reminded me this morning. We've got a three day weekend starting from tomorrow. Akira playfully bumps her elbow lightly into Lily's side grinning. <laughs> Told you I wouldn't miss it. You had something planned? If neither of you nor Hanako are busy. I've got no plan, something to do would be appreciated, Hanako. No, nothing. That's good. I was thinking we'd go to my family's summer house for a bit of quiet over the break. We've read used recently, so we'd have to dust things off a little while we're there. Oh, where is it? Up north in Hokkaido. The place is practically deserted, so it should be a nice, quiet break for you guys. Let's go. Hokkaido is like a wintery area, right? Basically. I'm pretty sure it is. Right? Whoa! Whoa! Yo, I want to go there. Holy shit. I mean, I actually, Hokkaido is one of the places I would really like to. Yeah, I thought so. That is the winter area because I'm pretty sure there was like a. Uh, Goddamn, what's the name? Skiing resort or whatever there. But dang, this looks so good. I, I literally just googled it, okay? I'm looking at graphics and it's so freaking nice and colorful. I go there. Someday, someday, maybe. Maybe. Or maybe not. Who knows? With the way things are, uh, no. You're not coming? Nah. Got a little holiday of my own set up with my boyfriend. I love my hair, suspicious of her intentions. It sounds like we're just cleaning up the summer house. For you. That's perhaps a valid conclusion. Both us zero in Akira. Her face somewhat evasive. <laughs> Looks like we were right. <laughs> That's just a convenient bonus, really. Mean guy left it in pretty good condition last we were there, promise. Now then, I'm out of here. Already? Akira. She quickly turns and walks away, her hand held high. See ya in a few days, guys! Lee and I can only sight her hasty retreat. <sighs> it does sound like it would be a nice place to go. 
League is too enthusiastic note, taking her carry back in one hand and placing her other on Hanako's shoulder for guidance as we to make our way to the taxi area. After the free cast of the past few days, spending a week in the country alone with her, Hanako sounds like a dream. The more I think about it, the more sure I am. This will be the right time and place to confess my feelings to her. I'm not... Maybe. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's not have any regrets, man. Anyway, let's end the episode. We'll continue tomorrow. Maybe we'll be going straight to the strip in the next episode. We'll see. Apparently, we will. For now, hope you enjoy. Hope you have a wonderful day. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye.